So what is the future of the printed book, uh, the old school books that you've probably seen your entire life? To paraphrase my favorite author, or one of my favorite authors, Mark Twain, I guess we could say the reports of the death of books have been greatly exaggerated. And let's look at why. Well, it's true that ebooks are taking the world by storm. In January of 2010, ebook sales topped 31 million, and that's an increase of over 200% when compared to January 2009. Sales of ebook readers like your Kindles and your Nooks, those are also taking off and at an alarming pace. It's also true that certain demographics of the world are reading conventional books less and less. In 2009, the National Endowment of the Arts found that Americans almost across the board were reading less for fun and reading less in terms of time spent reading per day or per month or per year. But that doesn't mean that people aren't learning anything. It means that we're absorbing content in different ways now. We're listening to audio through podcasts, we're watching videos like these or television, and we're also listening to what our friends post on social media. So what do all these statistics actually mean for readers in the United States? If you're a bibliophile, don't worry, folks. Books are going to be around for your entire lifetime. I can promise you that much, and there are several compelling reasons why. Uh, first, we have to realize that the United States is not the world entire, and most of the book sales in the world today already take place in developing countries, in places like China, which is the world's largest producer of new book titles, in places like rural India, in places like Central Africa. A book is oftentimes the best mode of access to the world's knowledge. If you don't have access to an electricity grid, if you don't have access to a computer or an internet service provider, you can't really take advantage of this massive digitization move that we see. And as people in wealthy countries begin to read their conventional books less, they may end up donating these to nonprofits and charitable organizations that bring even more books to the developing world. This puts us in a weird place. We might actually see the developing world have a glut of books while the wealthy world begins to have less and less as we move increasingly toward nooks and kindles and iPads. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. This isn't necessarily a good thing. There are a lot of factors involved and a lot of people who are sentimental for conventional books will be sad to see them sold in fewer places and they'll be sad to see fewer new book titles come out each year. So let's get to the root of this idea and then go as far as we can into the future. We're just going to speculate. We'll see what would happen. Well, the root of the idea behind these electronic books is the idea that we can digitize what was formerly a printed work. Uh, one of the most successful global organizations doing this is Google, which if you're watching this, you've probably heard of. Have you heard of Google Books? They're taking every printed book, theoretically, and putting it in digitized form. And this means that, let's say you're a scholar of 14th or 15th century Italian literature, and you can't make it to the one Italian library that has the one copy of the book that you would be killing yourself to find. Why not just log into Google Books and check it out there? Why not buy a copy for yourself? This is what Google would see as the future of the printed word. And regardless of how we feel about this, if we're using the internet, we may be helping Google Books on this mission. Have you ever seen the CAPTCHAs? What they require you to do is verify that you're human by typing two words that are displayed in a really weird, wavy looking way on the screen. These words are sometimes randomly chosen, but if you're using Google Books version of this program called reCAPTCHA, then you're actually helping Google software figure out what the original text looked like. You are helping digitize books. So let's go far, far into the centuries. and Let's assume the trends of rises in ebook sales and the trends of ubiquitous technology continue. Then it is quite possible, just barely, that in centuries, uh, hence, we could see books become curiosities. Books could become objects of art. They could become pieces in museums. They could be sort of relegated to antiquity. But for the mid to the near 
and some would argue the long-term future, books will not be going extinct simply because a majority of the world's population is so used to using them and they remain a sustainable, long-lasting alternative to more expensive methods around today. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.